Uh, this is Felme Deacon's first live Q&A from our Mayfair headquarters. Hi everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you're not joining us live, uh, thank you very much for taking time to look at, the, uh, to look at what we're doing over here. Um, what, we, what we want to do is show that we connect with our audience. We want to make sure that you guys know that we are um, available to talk to, happy to answer questions. So uh, again, welcome to our first live Q&A. This is John Tavell. Hi there, guys. Uh, Stuart Williams over here. Francis in the back. The team Hi, over there. Uh, we're more than happy to take questions as they come in. Uh, we've got a few already, which is great. We, we advertised this a few days ago, and we've had quite a good uptake with... Uh, with um, uh, with the engagement. Uh, so, <laughs> without further ado, we're going to make mistakes on this, guys, and it's not going to be perfect, but um, I want you to feel free to, to comment, feel free to send over further questions. Uh, we'll probably go for about 20, 25 minutes and try and answer as many questions as we can. We're also going to swap in and out um, because there might be some answers that, uh, that Francis wants to, to field as well. And I might need a break. And John might need a break, which is quite likely. <laughs> uh, so, okay, first one... Uh, let's have a look. First question uh, comes in from Claret and Blue. Um, can I negotiate with property developers? Uh, so I'll read a little bit more into the, into the question. Hi all, I've, uh, I've uh, seen a few new builds, um, uh, want to get involved, and just wondering, if it's a pos is it possible to negotiate prices with these developers? I get that they hold all the power, um, and if I, don't, you know, if I don't want to pay for it, somebody else will. Uh, is that a normal thing, or can, is it a normal thing to try and negotiate with them? Does it happen regularly? What is your advice? John, do you want to... Yeah, um, I mean, can you attempt to negotiate with property developers? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Um, if you don't ask, you don't get, and all of that uh, jazz. Um, I think, to be honest with you, I personally would be a little bit worried if um, there was massive scope for negotiation when you're dealing with the developer. I totally um, agree. I think the credibility of the sale is hinged on them pricing it appropriately, um, in line with kind of Rick's assessments, um, comparables, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, uh, that said, you know, if you're buying in bulk, um, there's definitely scope uh, to put a case to um, a prospective uh, developer with, with whom you want, work, want yeah. to work, what do you say? Um, so yeah, and, and I mean, I think that's where we come in, isn't it? Yeah, accounts? I mean, what we do is we, we vet developers uh, and developments extremely uh, heavily before we take them on and before we put them to our investors. Um, so anything that comes from us, you should know that it is priced well and it is priced to sell. Um, so, you know, but it is a na natural question. It's human nature to try and get a little bit more out of, yeah, of uh, out of it, isn't it? Uh, and we get it every single time. Every single deal that we do, it's, you know, well, what, what can be done? Um, if I'm buying three, if I'm buying five, what will happen? If I'm buying cash, can there be a reduction, et cetera, et cetera? Um, now, what I would always say is, I think to mirror John, that um, don't, you know, don't be put off uh, by, you know, always ask. Like John said, it's, it's, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. But don't be put off if the developer comes back and said, sorry, absolutely not. You know, what we're doing is we're pri we price these to sell and they're shifting very, very quickly. So they don't necessarily need to discount in a lot of cases of the guys that we work with. That's it, I mean, if, if it's a case of you could sell at five at RRP, if you like, yeah. versus uh, a bulk sale whereby you're dropping sort of 10, 20 percent, it's not in the developer's not interest, in the developer's obviously. Interest. If you've got five buyers, why would you d discount and sell to, to, to one? So yeah, I mean, if you can, in answer, can you negotiate with property developers? Yes, you can always ask. Um, I would always say when you're coming to, to, to us, you know, push push the boat out a little bit. Don't, you know, within reason, of course. You know, things like legal fees. Can you cover my legal fees if I'm buying two, etc.? Can you help me with uh, with um, what else? With, with it? furniture, furniture, furniture. Yeah, yeah. things yeah. like that. They're 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 sort of add-ons that could be negotiated. So always worth a try. Definitely uh, push the envelope as much as you can. But, but the asking price generally, for the most part, would represent the market value. Yeah, I guess is what we're saying. Yeah. So. Um, Yes, if so you don't are, be, if don't you're be too put off if you're snubbed. But yeah, <laughs> if you want to buy a whole building, uh, I'm sure developers might have uh, have a conversation with you about it. But um, on an individual unit, I would suggest no. Uh, but if you're buying bulk, there may be scope for that. I hope that uh, answers that okay. question. Uh, 
this is an interesting one. This comes from Marcelino4545. Um, and the question is, what are people's thoughts in regards to the housing market once the baby boomers start to retire slash pass away? Slightly morbid. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I'll, I'll hand it over to Josh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Under, Before that, you go into under that. the bus, Stuart? Or uh, let, let me, let me, a chance for me to shine? <laughs> let me... Uh, let me uh, 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 flesh out the question so there's a bit more to it so every year this is this is what to marcelino 4545 says every year it seems that there are articles and articles about millennials and general uh, generation z generation z generation z z uh, graduating um with massive amounts of debts and delaying the entry into the housing market etc not buying houses at all uh, continuously renting due to low pay etc etc and college debt um and then as baby women start passing, you know, start to move on and pass away, um, housing supply would theoretically increase. Uh, and if things continue that way, are generally are millennials and Generation Z going to see house prices drop? Uh, I mean, can I just I'll take this? No, just no, no, thank you. I thought that was my turn. Okay, go ahead. Um, I mean, first of all, hi, hi boomers. <laughs> 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 Hope you're all in good health. Uh, long may that continue. Um, no, quite simply. Well, the, I think I think I think Marcelino <laughs> four five four five is missing a point. Yes, you know, uh, obviously na the natural progression is is uh, people start to retire and pass away, but you're missing the point in the fact that the population is still going up. So people are still, you know, people are still being born yeah. every minute of every day. Uh, so in actual fact, there's a there's people, more people being born at the moment than there is dying. So the population is on the increase, uh, even with. Boomers, you know, yeah. uh, people live longer now. In the autumn of well, their lives, yeah. people live longer. People live longer. More, you know, it's not yeah. like they're not they're not leaving inheritances inheritances when they uh, when they do pass away. Um, and furthermore, you know, the longer I mean, I think Marcelino touches on something which is absolutely spot on, which is that you know they can't generation rents can't afford to buy. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. All that represents to our clients and indeed prospective landlords is a massive, massive opportunity. And the longer people are graduating and you know uh, coming up in the world and whatnot and unable to buy, the longer they're renting. And people who've got good professions um, want to live in quality stock. And to that end, I think, if anything, the boomers passing on, God rest your God souls. Rest your soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, if anything, just represent a bigger opportunity for landlords in the in the UK. Millennials. We are the first yeah, millennials. We? We're a, we're a month into <laughs> being a millennial. Sorry, guys. Um, Sorry, we're snowflakes and like, millennials. <laughs> like, like John says, um, yes, the the you know we're, we're creating generation of renters. Um, and the more you know college debt, as you say, or the more you know the the, the lower the paid jobs, as as, as Marcelino is sort of, sort of commenting on it. Um, the less people can afford, and housing prices are going up, the less people can afford to buy. This generation are almost quite happy with, with renting and continuing to rent, which creates an incredible, an incredible uh, opportunity for landlords, for investors coming in. Those that can afford to get on the market to, to buy in a rental demand location um, can really, really benefit from this next generation and the one after that. Yeah, and the, the <laughs> final question, wouldn't this result in a, in a massive decrease in price for housing stock? No, not at all. No. Because funnily enough, any savvy investor looking at a marketplace in which uh, renters are abundant, um, uh, people yeah. will be competing for those assets. Um, exactly. And to that end, that will just drive prices up. So Marcelino, thank you very much for your, uh, for your question. Can I add uh, one more point on that? Yeah, sure. That also opened up opportunities to other cities where it's more affordable, places like Hull, places Absol like absolutely. Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And ultimately, you don't just look at the south where you find yourself priced out yeah. all the big cities yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. City centers, really, yeah. really good yeah. point from francis you know you know uh, um things things spread urbanization you know people move to other cities if you're priced out in a big city i mean we're working on something right now which is exactly that we've been working really well with birmingham over the last year and a half or so and birmingham's a fantastic market um, one of the only complaints about Birmingham at the moment is that it's getting a bit pricey now. Yep. Um, so what we're doing is we're riding, riding that wave and working with a very, very strong developer in Wolverhampton, one of the satellite cities of Birmingham. Mm. Birmingham's still an excellent market. We've still got great projects there, but we've also got an opportunity for investors uh, to get in uh, at half the price in Wolverhampton. Yeah. And earlier, uh, in, the, uh, earlier, in, the, well. earlier in the growth curve of the city. So yes, um, really good point there, Francis. Um, thanks for that. 
So let's Great. see what the next one is. Uh, here we go. Actually, on the back of that, Francis, do you want to join me for this one? Absolutely. Can we no, set no, the back? Tag, yep. tag in. All right. <laughs> you go <laughs> that way around, mate. Which way around? around. Go this way, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Seamless, absolutely seamless here at Filmy Deacon. Um, pleased to say that it's not raining outside, it's grey and typical yeah. for London. But here we are. Hi. Francis uh, joining us now um, to take and field this question from uh, No Bides, I think that's what they're no using. Bides. No Bides, okay. okay. Uh, cash Out Refinance, it's called. So something actually right up your street. Francis is a senior portfolio manager here. Um, so this actually works quite well for him. So what is it? Um, I'd like your investor's opinion, it says. Um, I have a house that I'd like to buy on the market for around 300,000. Um, I can probably get a loan up to 280, it says. Um, I also have a rental property. The principal of the loan that I have on that is 160. Get your pens out, everybody, uh, and your notepads. And it's been appraised at 250 last year. So I can... So should I be able to refinance at that? I'll probably be able to take out somewhere near 40K. Uh, should I use the 40K then to put on the next house? First things first, stands out to me instantly, and I think it's probably stand out to you, Absolutely. is we've got to get the maths right here and the expectations, manage expectations. Um, so do you want to feel this one, Francis? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you've already got an existing property that's worth around 250K and mm -hmm. uh, you've got a loan or a mortgage debt at 160K, and that rule of thumb, you can pull out 75% loan yep. to value of Trust the property. The calculator. Yeah. So your property is worth around 250k. 250k so times 75 percent. It uh, will be 100. 187.500. Correct. And then uh, from there you pay your existing loan. 160k. Okay. Take away 160k. Yeah. So 187,500. Take away 160k. I should be able to do that in my head. Yeah. Uh, it's 27,500. So that. Yeah, is so, the amount that you'd be you'd, you'd be, be left with access. after you remortgage. So you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll be able to access that amount. That's correct. So it's not really forty grand, forty k that you'd be accessing. You'd be getting uh, twenty seven thousand pounds. Now, can you invest that elsewhere? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you can, and uh, use it as um, um, looking for a long term off plan project, yeah. for example, whereby it gives you more time to raise even more capital, depending on what you want to go for. Now, if you're investing for well, the long term, mm -hmm. then I'll suggest payups. London markets or the south, the southeast, that's not enough. It's not going to give you exactly what you want. Because you wouldn't get a well positioned okay. cardboard box in a uh, nice <laughs> 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 yeah, so, uh, yeah. for that kind of money. Uh, then, this is where you have to be a little bit more creative. Yeah. Look at other cities, yeah. uh, northern cities, yeah, uh, Midlands. Yeah. Midlands. Where Twenty-seven and a half thousand pounds yeah. would go would go quite well to getting you a nice, you know, central, in demand type, you know, one bed yeah. apartment. Yeah. Apartment, yeah, yeah. city centre. Okay, I'll sure. uh, use the example of Wolverhampton again. Yeah, uh, whereby only we do have other very attractive opportunities as well. Yeah. aside from Wolverhampton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that that will definitely allow you to get uh, an asset that that's worth around uh, just under hundred k, yeah. and that will provide you an income. Uh, gross probably circa eight percent but you know it's all about being creative yeah and making your money work smarter continually yeah. I think the, at the end of the question is is this a good move do people uh, do this stuff do people do this type of stuff um, and I know it will reset my rental uh, property for it will reset the loan on my rental property for the next 30 years yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. I mean, being in the property market for such a long time and building clients' portfolio, not just for one year, two years, we do it for a lifetime. Yeah. As we all know, it, properties in the UK in the last 100 years, especially in the last 60 years where we have got data backing it up, property doubles in value every 7, 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, if you've got a mortgage of 30 years, absolutely. A lot of my clients do this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. They buy a property and uh, they hold on to it for three, four, five years, remortgage it, mm -hmm. pull that seed capital out, and reinvest it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely, I'll say yes, do do that. So people, the, people do do that, investors do do that. That's yeah. the best way to grow your wealth. You use the income and use the, the leverage that you've generated from your, your, your current stock, your current portfolio, to then reinvest and reinvest and grow and grow and grow. And that is the model that we're working on. Which actually leads us nicely into the next question, yeah. uh, and I think the last question for now, um, from 
Vivir Atumori um, says that if somebody has cash in hand to buy an apartment, to buy an investment property, why would they still take a mortgage? Why would they still take a loan? Uh, do you mind if I, I'll, I'll jump in yeah, on that? Absolutely. First things first, if you've got yeah. cash in hand to buy an investment property outright, fantastic, congratulations, you're doing something right. Um, secondly, you should definitely look at taking, taking finance. Uh, if you have, let's say we're talking about 200,000 pounds, this is actually yeah. reflects uh, another video that we've done. If you wanna go back to our back catalog or go to our YouTube subscription, you're more than welcome to, to flick through. I think there's one called Scaling Your Portfolio in 15 right. Years, in 50 which years talks exactly months. about this. Yeah. Um, you, you know, let's say you've got 200,000 pound cash, uh, use that 200,000 pounds for one property, it's gonna generate you a nice 6% yield, for example, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, use that uh, property, use that cash uh, to split up and buy three properties with mortgages. Mm -hmm. You're then going to generate a far higher income for yourself. Scaling Absolutely. your portfolio. Yes, you're paying out on mortgages, but the income that you generate over and above the mortgages and over and above the cost will, will be far higher than if you just bought one unit with the cash. Uh, and also give you a lot more flexibility as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it allows you to then, you know, buy, keep two sell one, you know, whatever you yeah. want to do, remortgage out of one in five years time, whatever it is, it gives you a lot more flexibility. And that in property investment is key, I think. Absolutely. You agree? I totally agree. I mean, referring back to the same question that yep. I asked earlier, linking it to this one, yep. as we said, property uh, goes up in value every 10 to 15 years. Yep. And uh, with a portfolio, 200K, you're in control of the portfolio, that's worth around 800K. You hold on to it for 10 years, that would double in value at 1.6 million comparing to your 200k yeah, that's the thing isn't it time. you're just basically yeah. scaling up on the returns as well as the, the, oh, the respective growth yeah. you're spreading the risk over absolutely. multiple properties yeah. rather than one yeah you're keeping your money more agile that's, an, that's another thing i did mention yes yeah, spreading the yeah. risk that's a fantastic uh, yeah. uh, example there you're absolutely right john yeah. um it just allows you to be a, a lot more agile um you put that's literally putting all your eggs in one basket if you just lump all that cash <laughs> It, that you, your hard-earned cash into one option. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're able to scale it, um, leverage it as much as possible, that is why people take a loan. That's why we would advise you to take finance on uh, building your portfolio. Um, the cost of lending these days is so so competitive um, that it's in your interest. I mean, before it absolutely. would have been a deterrent, particularly for international investors, yeah. to, to get a mortgage because yeah. uh, the rates were horrific. But these days, they're they're competitive. Yeah, they're really quite competitive. And it enables you to, rather than for 200 grand, take one property, you can take four in, yeah, and again, absolutely. diversify, yeah, but exactly. qu no, quadruple your returns yeah. and the prospective growth as well. So, yeah. I so, totally agree. Um, so really, really appreciate you guys logging on and the questions that we've uh, faced. Uh, please do feel free to keep these coming. We'll do this. We'll try and do this, and we'll do it a lot more slicker and smoother next time. <laughs> without <laughs> matching jumps. <as> well. <laughs> without <laughs> ma well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will do it as smooth as we possibly can. We want to try and do this sort of thing at least once a month. Yeah. As you guys know, we hold events here in our London office um, at least once a month as well. We've got another one coming up at the end of this month next Friday. Thursday. No, Thursday. Thursday. Next Thursday, the thirtieth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here in our boardroom uh, in Mayfair, if you want yeah. to join us, you're more than welcome to do so. We're going to be tackling all sorts of property investment um, queries and, uh, and concerns. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we're more than happy to, to discuss. Feel free to call the office, uh, email us, uh, click on the website, subscribe to all of our channels. Uh, we, we're trying to put out as much content as we can. And if you want to see anything different from us, or if you want to ask us any further questions, feel free to get in touch. Uh, so today we have covered, uh, I'll just run over the four uh, subjects we've covered. If I've got cash uh, for an investment property, why would I take a loan? Uh, that was question number four. Question number three uh, was the cash out on refinance. If I've got a, a, a rental property at the moment, can I refinance it to buy my next property? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, question number two uh, was the, the, the really upbeat one about, <laughs> about baby boomers uh, <laughs> passing on uh, and, uh, and, and us inheriting, uh, you know, a, a different type of property market. They had a good um, run. Yeah. So what happens, what, what's going to happen to the next generation when uh, the, the scapegoats, the baby, boom, baby boomers are, 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 are all moving on? Uh, and then the first question that we fielded was, can you negotiate with property developers? Uh, and again, the answer to that is uh, always try. You, you don't ask, you don't get. But 
uh, if you're buying in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a boom market, if you're buying in something that's actually doing well, you should probably, you probably expect not to get a huge amount back. Little things, the subsidiary things like furniture, like legal fees, and things like that, you might be able to get thrown into your package if you, if you, you know, especially if you're buying multiple or, or putting a lot more cash in. So, four really, really, really good points um, and questions. I hope uh, you guys found it uh, entertaining and helpful. Um, listen, looking forward to doing this again sometime. John? Thank you very much, guys. All the best. <laughs> Take care. All the best. Bye bye. Thank you.